Hi, right, it's Kona Tex here again with the next video in the series about installing and building Gen 2 Linux on a 32-bit PC. So, so far we've installed the basic Gen 2 system and I've shown you how I've rebuilt the system to take advantage of um, optimizations for the compiling so that rather than have the base system with generic 686 i686 instructions um, I've configured the GCC to compile using the processor that I've got in the computer the Athlon MP and also I've added in uh, enhanced instruction support as well even though none of these have been used at the moment now um, it's not really necessary to do that because over time um, as packages get updated, assuming you've already got the um, optimizations in, then obviously the older packages, the original packages that came with the stage three would be replaced. But by taking that time now, I've uh, ensured that right from the outset, um, the packages and binaries that I've compiled for Gen 2 will be running at their most efficient. So what I'm going to do this time is to demonstrate how I go through the, mo the motions of um, keeping Gen 2 up to date. So it's been um, probably a couple of days now since I did the recordings of installing Gen 2. So with any, with any luck there's been um, a few updates and I can show you what I do with that. So first thing I'll do is I'll log in to the machine and what we did before is we did um, emerge minus minus sync to synchronize our own copy of the repository with the remote version now while that's okay there's um, probably a slightly better way of doing this and that's to use a package called EIX and what this does it gives us um, it does basically the same thing it does several things it does the emerge sync and then it maintains a database of all the packages that means that we can do um, searches on that database if we want to look up uh, things about the packages for example what files are in a package uh, where the files get installed or we can search uh, for information about the use flags, things like that. So, Emerge has got a search facility, but it's a it's a lot slower. And by by running this EIX sync, it's no extra work on um, our our side of things. It takes a little bit longer because it has to update the database and do some cross referencing, and it produces a nice output at the end of it. When you run um, Emerge sync, as we did when we were installing. It just syncs the repository and that's it, it stops. With the EIX, it does a few extra steps, as I say, and one of the last things it does is it gives a nice coloured output on all the changes that are identified and it, it picks out what packages we got and so on. A bit like the Emerge when you're doing an update, but it's kind of different. It sort of gives you like a preview without running Emerge. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is to Emerge this package. And you'll notice I've done... AV again to ask and V for verbose just to see more information about the use flags. I haven't done the, the one or the one shot uh, option because I want this to go into the world set. So this becomes part of my um, profile, if you like, of installed packages. So yeah, you can, you can see it's pulling in a couple of other um, packages. Um, actually, one thing I'll, what I'll do just before I start this, I'm going to emerge the uh, uh, GP, a package called GPM, which is um, a package that allows us to use the um, mouse in this text console. So it means I can copy and paste stuff um, and make things a little bit easier. So um, what I'll do is just emerge GPM. Again, minus AV. And 
there it is there so you can see the flags that are available um, there's only one that I can set which is to looks like to set static libraries so I'm not interested in setting that so I'll just accept the defaults and press enter and just wait a minute or two for it to build it's a relatively small package yes yeah, 40k by the looks of it so quite tiny Okay, so that has installed. Um, there is a config file that goes along with this. Um, in the all the config files for packages are in etc conf d. All the uh, user configurations. Uh, right, fine. Might have to be another another one that I install. Um, you can see it defaults to a, a PS2 type mouse. Um, and uh, if you've got that sort of mouse and also the um, location of the mice, mouse devices here as well that you can uh, set um, probably want to most mice these days are not the PS2 standard so you probably want the uh, second option IMPS2 um, and again, if you're using a PS2, it's likely that this would be the device. So as you see on the screen, is probably the one configuration that will work for most people. Um, there is an option down here that might be worth setting on. It says, please uncomment this line if you want GPM to understand child sets used in URLs and names and names with uh, the tilde or colon in them etc is a good idea to turn on so I think I'll uncomment that being as it suggests it's a good idea um, and there's some more options here it says to see GPM 8 man page for more information about that so I'll save that as it is and GPM runs as a service so as we started so let's start that going now and that started so if I wiggle the mouse I should see a cursor yes I can so let me just test if I double click that it's highlighted it if I center click it's pasted it as well so it seems to be working fine um, let's try right clicking yeah that's doing a, a block copy as well block highlight so it all seems to be working so let's add it to the uh, default run level remember to do that so it starts up every time we reboot the machine uh, default so RC update add GPM to the default run level so that's in there so that's fine so it just means that it gives me something to point with on the screen um, and also if I need to copy and paste anything just makes things a little bit easier so right next thing move on to this EIX program that I was going to show so merge EIX 
um, minus AV. And as you can see, there's a couple of other packages that get pulled in, and then we've got the actual EIX program itself. So let's get that one installing.
Okay, so that's installed. The first thing we need to do is to run the actual EIX sync program. What this will do, it will run the emerge sync and then it will create a new database because it's the first time we've run it and then it will just behave as, as usual. And then every time you use EIX sync, it will synchronize, update the database again and, um, and then just, yeah, just need to do this once there is another method on the gen 2 wiki for how to run this where you run individual steps um, and it is actually the recommended way of running it but i find this way more convenient to to use you can just do the one command as you did before um, uh, without having to type anything extra so you can see it's rebuilding the categories because it's the first time i've run it and it will do this again after it's done the sync you can see there it's writing the new database and now it's running merge sync. So if you remember when we did Emerge Sync the first time around when we we're installing Gen 2 for the first time, um, the Sync did a similar thing as you can see on the screen now. It was displaying um, categories and packages and the files it was updating and you'll occasionally see deleting uh, on the screen where it, it's also deleting older packages or older versions so you can see it's synchronizing. And as you see, it's, it's a little bit slow because it's an older machine. It's running rsync and rsync can be slow because it's got lots of uh, computations to do to find out differences between files. Um, on a fast machine, assuming you've got a fast server or fast link, it's uh, reasonably quick. It'll probably do it in a minute or two. It also uh, can be quite disk intensive. so. If you're on an SSD, that will improve performance as well, especially at the end where it's um, running the diff. Um, but on a, a mechanical drive, it will take that a little bit longer.
So this bit always takes time. This is a bit that speeds up on an SSD. It's um, accessing the disk quite a lot at the moment. Okay, looks like that's just about done. What it should do next is uh, show display of all the differences and um, hopefully we'll see packages that have been, that we've got installed, highlighted, that uh, will be updated. And there you go, you can see all the changes. Yeah, there's... Um, three packages there that are going to be updated when we do merge so ACL, ATTR and GREP and you can see that the current version for ACL is 2.2.53 and it's going to be upgraded a small point to 2.2.53-R1 same with ATTR is going from dash R3 to dash R4 and GREP is going up a complete point version from 3.4 to 3.5 so that's a quite useful thing to have. Um, there are a few EIX tools. I'm not going to go through all of them. If you do EIX and tab, um, there's a few here that are useful. There's things like this EIX diff and EIX update are the commands that um, you can run, which EIX sync basically runs um, itself. Um, one of these that I find quite useful is this EIX test obsolete. And what it does, it scans all the config files for any inconsistencies. If you've got, for example, um, something uh, that you, uh, isn't, um, you got some information about a package that's not installed anymore, it, it brings that sort of information to, to your attention. So it's quite useful to running, especially when your system's growing to be quite big, quite a few packages. Uh, things getting a little bit more 
harder to manage. Uh, that's quite useful. So you can see all installed versions of packages are in the database. So obviously everything's all right. It's still a brand new system. So I'm going to run my update command. Okay, I need to, have I lost it? Oh, there it is, I spelt it. Uh, run this and this will go through and identify exactly what changes are. So it will find those three files, but there may be also subtle e-bill changes that wouldn't have come up because there's not a version update to the actual package itself. But uh, an e-build might have changed, it might have altered the a use flag, for example. So although we only saw those three, there may be more actual changes that need to be um, performed to do a complete update. So this is the basic sequence is we do the synchronization with the repository. So if you don't use EIX, it's just emerge minus minus sync. If you do use EIX, then it's the EIX sync. Um, and then you run the update command, which is what I've just done. As you can see, it's showing the changes. There are no other changes. So it is just those three packages that had the U against them for update. So I'll run them in next. And I'll just wait for those to complete. And it's just worth mentioning with that um, confirmation screen on the on the emerge update, you'll see an R for a rebuild, which we saw before when I was updating the system with the um, optimizations for GCC for the compiler. Uh, U for an update. There's D for download, a uh, downgrade. Sorry, if the version has to go down a um, a version for some reason, the package has to go down a version. Um, and there's probably one or two other flags that indicate things are going to happen that I can't think off the top of my head. Uh, but generally you'll see U for update and R for re a rebuild. And a rebuild might happen because, as I said, uh, there might be a change to the e-build, which is the file that describes how to compile a package and what attributes that package has got in terms of flags and so on and dependencies. Um, and a, a, yeah, a U for the update and an R for the rebuild is generally the two you'll see most often.
Okay, so that's finished compiling the updates. Um, so the system's completely up to date now in terms of packages, certainly within the last 12, 24 hours when the last um, sync was done with the repository. And as it says at the bottom there, it's uh, important to remove obsolete packages with Emerge Depth Clean. So we'll run that next. And I generally run this with a minus A. I think I explained in one of my previous videos. Um, you can run it with minus P to be sure that you don't actually do anything. Um, but it does mean that when you rerun it, you'll have to wait for it to process again. Whereas with the A, although you may maybe a slim chance of accidentally pressing Enter to accept um, it to do something, um, it's a minimal chance. Um, it's generally safe to use. Um, and that's obviously not found anything to delete. There's another command called revdep rebuild, which is reverse dependencies rebuild, and that looks for libraries which may need to be rebuilt because um, they're missing or for whatever re other reason. Uh, Gen 2 don't uh, advise to run that every time, um, but it doesn't really indicate when it does need to be run. So what I tend to do is after I've done my update, I'll run the emerge depth clean minus A to the remove any packages and then I'll run RevDep rebuild. It only takes a you know, minute or so at very most. Um, it's not, it doesn't take too long. Um, but to run that, it doesn't exist by default. If I type in RevDep rebuild, uh, you have to run that with minus P. There isn't a minus A version, but it does remember what it's found when, it, when you do the um, minus P. So as you can see, it's not installed, and to get it, we need to in merge another package called uh, Gen Toolkit, and this actually has a, a few other extra tools which um, uh, can be quite useful. I won't go into all of them now. There are wiki pages about all these tools and what they do, uh, but generally there's sets of tools for searching the database and finding out what flags there are and so on. Um, so you can see that's come up there. There's no other dependencies. Let's install this. And again, because it's a new system, there's only a few packages been installed. I wouldn't expect RevDip Rebuild to come back with anything that needs to be rebuilt. Um, but as I say, it's probably a good idea to get into the habit. Uh, the worst thing can happen, I found this to my experience, and when you read through the forums, uh, people have problems like they've not done something or they've forgotten to do um, emerge depth clean and things like that, just little things. If you do these things religiously every time, then you're not going to get problems. You'll have a nice sweet system, easy to maintain, um, with as few problems as possible. And it suggests there's other packages there. Uh, at the end of the emerge that you may want to look at. I didn't describe what they are, but you can easily look that up on the Gen 2 uh, package page. So now if I run revdep rebuild minus P, So it takes a little bit longer to run than Emerge Depth Clean does, just a little bit longer. Um, but as I say, it's, it's worth doing. Occasionally you'll, you'll get something that comes up in here that you'll need to action upon and actually do rebuild the libraries to ensure everything's working. And as you can see, it says your system's consistent. And that's it. Um, I wonder if it's worth showing. Yeah. Um, no, I won't show anything else. I think that's enough for the update. Um, I was going to show you some of the other commands that have come in with Gen Toolkit and so on, but they're probably more appropriate in another video. They're not really to do with updates as such. They're probably more to do with um, installing new packages. So I'll leave it at that. So, yeah, basically the, the sequence of events I've shown today, just to recap, is more or less all you need to do to keep the system up to date. So tomorrow or a few days time or 
people vary with, with recommendations for updating Gen 2 between you know every day and between a week or so, but you don't want to leave it too long um, because if pa packages get out of date and get out of step, it can be a bit of a nightmare to try and get things up to scratch. Um, but yeah, generally it's synchronized either with Merge Sync or EIX Sync. Um, then the update command, then the Emerge Step Clean, then the Rev Step Rebuild, and that's more or less all there is to it. There will be times where you'll get news items coming in, you've got to action them, or there might be something special, something different you've got to do, but there'll be information on that and uh, very likely uh, help on the forums to, to take you through that. But thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please um, click on the thumb up. And if you'd like to receive more videos or notification of more videos that I produce, then click the uh, red subscribe button. Thank you very much. Goodbye.